The year 1857, Queen Victoria was the Empress of British India. There was an Indian mutiny and uh, it was the first time in the history of British India that the Britishers felt threatened that the Indians can also revolt. Queen Victoria was furious. She sent her spies to India to find out what has gone wrong, who are those people who are, uh, who have, you know, gone and revolted against us, the Britishers, who could never be defeated. Who are these Indians? And uh, the, she sent her spies and uh, they found out there were these two uh, very influential members of the Indian society who were influential in terms of power, strength, and influential in, in, in terms of money. And these two, in, two, two individuals were the female sex workers, the prostitutes of India, and the transgenders, or the hijra community. How? Because the transgenders and the female sex workers had a great influence on the Indian society, as well as they had a lot of power, and they had a lot of strength, and they had a lot of wealth. So, uh, Lord Macaulay, who was a British officer in those days, was sent by queen, the Queen that go and see how we can crush these two powers so that Indians will not revolt again. And then Lord Macaulay went to enact a law in the 1860s, which was the birth of Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code. Now, it's very interesting that how these two communities were involved in getting into this law. Now, if you listen to this law, you, it, will, it will, I think, make things clear. This law, Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code, says that any individual who voluntarily or involuntarily has sexual intercourse between a man and a man, a man and a woman, and a man and an animal, which is penetrative in nature, but doesn't result in procreation, then those individuals can be penalized with imprisonment and fine or both. So, see very cleverly, she said, okay, with, when you go to a transgender, it will be either anal sex or oral sex. So you will not possibly be producing a baby. It will be a penetrative sex. With a female sex workers, yes, there is a chance of procreating. But who goes to a prostitute or female sex workers to produce a baby? So uh, in both the ways, a transgender would be penalized, a hijra would be penalized, a female sex worker would be, would be penalized, and the people who would go to them for having sex would also be penalized. It's very interesting that when she was, uh, Lord Macaulay enacted this law, uh, they spoke about man and man and man and uh, woman and man and animal, which is bestiality. I don't know how she got that in her mind, but uh, she, she never believed in lesbianism. She thought lesbians don't exist, women and women can never have sex. So, poor things, they were left out of that. And, uh, but this was the case. Now, Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code uh, went on, and uh, uh, 1947, as we all know, India got independent. It became a republic, became a de democratic republic. Uh, this law continued in our country. Uh, and uh, not just that, our uh, uh, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, I, I have great respects for him, he drafted the Indian constitution and the Indian constitution uh, 
when he he drafted that indian constitution it is totally violating section th or rather section 377 is totally vital violating the indian constitution because on one hand uh, the, the fundamental rights which have been guaranteed to us in the indian constitution says that we should all citizens of india irrespective of their caste creed race religion and sex uh, have the right to equality have the right to privacy have the right to dignity and respect and have the right not to be discriminated whereas this law says no you don't have the right to privacy what you do in your bedroom the government has to interfere with that whom you have sex with how you have sex that also government interferes in that whether you have oral sex or anal sex or vaginal sex still you you interfere that and not only that this there is a interpretation of this law which also says that even masturbation is a crime i said if that is the case then all of us sitting in this audience we are all criminals <laughs> you know so we who doesn't masturbate you know so so we are all criminals here we, 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 then we sh they should have more jails more prisons but anyway that happened uh, i don't know how in uh, the, the the government allowed this section to to exist not only that i mean I'm, I'm diversifying from the topic. There are so many laws in our country which were formed by the Britishers. Britishers have left us 73 years ago. I don't know why we even we are carrying those laws with us. There is a law in our country, you'll be surprised, that if a RTO officer comes to office without polishing his shoes, he can be suspended. Isn't it crazy? I mean, I went to my RTO officer the other day and when I saw, look at his shoes, he was not even wearing shoes, he was wearing chappals or sandals. I said, you are suspended. He said, who the hell are you? I said, I am not saying, the, see the law, Indian Penal Code says that you are suspended. Well, that was the case. And that is the reason why people like me had to knock the doors of the court and tell the court, give us the justice, give us those rights which has been guaranteed to us by the Indian constitution have been, we have been deprived of our basic rights, our rights of the human rights. So when I say I'm a LGBTQAI plus whatever, whatever activist, I'm not just that, I'm a human rights activist. I work for human rights, LGBT rights are human rights. And we, I and my other members uh, of the community, of the LGBT community have fought for all of us, because this law doesn't apply just to man and man, it applies also to man and woman, which meant that even a married man and a woman, a husband and wife, if they indulge in any kind of sexual intercourse, voluntarily within in the bedroom of their homes, and in, during that sexual process, they don't produce a baby, they could be penalized. So for Queen Victoria, you could only have sex to produce babies, no sexual, you, you can't indulge into any sexual pleasure. So it was important to get these rights back and, and on the basis of these things which we, we produced to the court, that look, uh, this is the Indian constitution, this is what it says, right to privacy, fortunately, Justice uh, Chandrachud, one of our uh, judges of Supreme Court gave us, gave, gave this uh, to us uh, quite a while ago and 6th September uh, to 2018 which I consider a very historic day in the uh, not just in India but in the world which with one of the most progressive judgments ever made by any court of the world was given and finally we got our freedom and <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, this freedom is not just for us. This freedom is for all of us because you also masturbate. So, so we, have, we have freed you also. Now you can masturbate without having to bother about going to jail. So uh, this freedom is for the entire country. This freedom is for the all, the all the citizens of India, whether it is a man or a woman. But three things have been taken into consideration when this when the bench, the honorable judges pronounced this case, they said uh, 
uh, the the section has not been cancelled but it has been amended because we want to protect women rights we want to protect men rights because men can also be sexually abused women can also be sexually abused and we also want to protect child rights and of course we want to protect animal rights i would never encourage bestiality i am i am fighting for animal rights also i will never encourage bestiality so we want to protect so this this law has made these changes and said that any adult who voluntarily or with consent of each other has sex then that person cannot be penalized so which means we we will automatically uh, child abuse sex uh, child sex uh, abuse uh, child molestation women rape uh, uh, sex with men and sex with animals is ruled out so uh, but uh, at the same time the court has also said that this is a irreversible law you, you cannot no court of the law in the country can reverse this it is full and final even the parliament cannot challenge this yes unless if the indian constitution is changed then i don't know but otherwise uh, it it cannot be challenged a very important part was that this law was not being used as much as it was misused i work for an organization called the lakshya trust which works for uh, the uh, for hiv awareness and pre prevention amongst the the lgbt community now we have faced so much of police harassment because of this law we uh, uh, our, the police of the would come we would be spread we would be spreading awareness about hiv we would be going to field and distributing condoms and the police would come and arrest my workers and not only that police have exploited us they have extorted us they have blackmailed us and they have gone to arrest our my staff not and not that uh, it has also happened that the police has had forced sex with my workers and that also without condoms so now tell me who is the who is the criminal are we the criminals who are spreading awareness of hiv distributing condoms saving lives of the people or is the police the who is supposed to be uh, the law enforcing authority who is supposed to protect us they are having forced sex uh, with us and they are saying that you guys are spreading homosexuality you you guys are spreading hiv that is and and of course we are also violating section 377 so it was very necessary that this law got changed because even the ministry of health government of india had said that this law is an impediment to hiv control in the country i am working for hiv for last 20 years india is now unfortunately third highest in the world with regards to hiv infections we may not get a gold medal in olympics but we already got bronze in uh, hiv which is very unfortunate we have the largest youth population in our country and we are already 2.1 million people infected with hiv according to the government of india's records so it is high time we rise we spread awareness about that and laws like these which have been obstacles to our to hiv control in the country it's 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 a very we are very fortunate that this law has been um, changed it has been amended for the betterment of entire society even the united nations uh, patted the back of india when this this news came and said that india has for the first time recognized the human rights of its citizens which doesn't happen i mean there are a lot of countries who are not who don't recognize the human rights but india has recognized this right the human rights and that's why when this this case was going on in the supreme court it wasn't an easy task we were like we have fought this case for 20 years now first the, for the court court refused they never even took this law they said you people have not penalized why are you coming to us i said that is all the more reason you know we 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 need to bring to your notice that this is a colonial uh, it was made during the colonial time the britishers have even done away with this law in their country why is india continuing with this law it makes no sense and not just that the high court we won the the case and uh, and then supreme court we lost it and in the between time we had so many religious leaders who opposed us i mean the, for the first time in the history of india all the religious leaders of our country united 
It has never happened before. Hindus, Muslims, Christians, even within Hindus, Jains, Digambars and Shwetambars and Sufis and Siyas and Khojas and they all united. You know? And Baba Ramdev. <laughs> I cannot forget uh, talking about him. He challenged me that you're a mental case. I said, my God, if I'm a mental case, why would I be invited for TED Talks, you know? And he challenged me, he said, no, 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 no. I, you come to Haridwar, you're only Uttarakhand, not very far from here. You come to, you come to Haridwar, I'll, I'll, I'll make you straight in three months, don't worry. <laughs> you're, mentally, you're mentally ill, I'll make you straight. I said, okay, I'm, I'm willing to come. And I told Baba, I said, look, with due respect to you, I respect you for yoga, what you're doing for yoga is wonderful, I, I respect you for that. But in three months, if you're not able to make me straight, you come to Rajpipla, come to my palace, in three hours I'll make you gay. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> hypocrisy. This is hypocrisy. This is simple hypocrisy. That was 20, 2009, uh, now it is 2019, 10 years. Baba has not accepted my challenge as yet. <laughs> and he never, yeah. It's all hypocrisy. See, it is because of this hypocrisy which uh, made me come out and talk about my own sexuality, my own private life uh, in the public. Because I wanted to break this hypocrisy. That yes, homosexuality exists in our country, it has been, it is there in the Kama Sutra, it is there in our, in our uh, scriptures, it is there in the idols of uh, Khajurao temples. Why don't we accept it? Why are we so shy about it? Why don't you come out and accept that yes, it is, why do you say it is a Western influence? It is not a Western influence. Like yoga, like belly dancing and a lot of other things we'll be seeing today. It was all Indian, Indian origin. And it was to break this, I, I came out and I'm, I'm very happy and I, I thank the Supreme Court for bringing this out. And humanity has won and hypocrisy has lost. Thank you.